Janine Marin stands just about in the middle of her education because she plans to follow earning a baccalaureate degree at the University of California at Davis with four years of medical school and another four or more years of residency as she reaches her goal of becoming a medical doctor. Janine brings her passion for making a difference and making it in a big way to what she knows she will what she knows will be a life of hard work and sacrifice. She thanks her mother and father and her best friend Margaret for allowing her to grow in her own way. And tonight her wish is that you, her fellow graduates, will also embrace your dream and dedicate yourselves to making those dreams realities. Mr. Kamlich, Mr. Rios, faculty, family, and friends, welcome to the commencement of the graduating class of 1990. My fellow graduates, I feel very honored for the privilege to speak to you on this pride-filled occasion, and I hope what I have to say will touch you, enlighten you, encourage you, for that is the whole purpose for my speaking tonight. We are all about to step into our futures, futures we are all anxious to begin, and perhaps a little scared to begin as well. But before taking that first step forward, stop, turn around, and now while you still can, thank those people who have helped you get to this point in your life. Before you drift off in your own directions, remember those who have meant something to you and say something to them. And I don't just mean the big people like your parents or your best friend. I also mean the everyday people, like your teachers and classmates who have made coming to school for the past four years somewhat bearable. The teacher who actually gave you a clear answer when you asked a question. The, that kind-hearted classmate who said an encouraging word or gave a warm hug. Just when you were thinking that this whole mess called life is not what it's cracked up to be. It is pointless at such a time in your life as graduation to put pride ahead of people. Before we leave them, we need to tell them, either with words or even with just a smile. And now we look towards the future. I believe that as long as you have your future, you also have a reason to hope. Because you cannot change your past. You can adapt to the present, but you can plan your future. Within each of you graduating here tonight is the potential for an individual future as bright as each of you choose your own to be. That potential will turn into reality if you always keep in mind three very important principles. First, I implore you to follow where your own motivations lead you and never to accept the words of anyone who says, no way, you can't do that, you're going to fail. Just remember it was me who tried to tell you my father has always told me that I should consider such people to be my best friends because it is that kind of negative criticism which fuels the fire in my belly and feeds the determination in my will to prove them wrong. Second, though it is sometimes hard to do, try to employ into your life tolerance and an open mind. Tolerance of new ideas and new experiences, of individual thoughts and unique perceptions. Look at the fellow graduates sitting next to you. They are not quite like you. They do not think like you. They may in fact be entirely different from you. But that is the beauty of the human creature. If you close your mind to all which does not fit your mold, your soul dies. Third, remember that ultimately you are responsible for your own success or failure. Obstacles will stand in your way throughout your life, either in the form of people or situations, which will attempt to thwart your ambitions. If you let those obstacles defeat you, you have yourself and only yourself to blame. You are destined to lose if you fail to recognize that you are the master of your own fate. No matter what you decide to make of your life, accept the fact that anything worth doing is worth doing well. And to do anything well takes raw effort. Mental, emotional, physical effort. 
No career is trouble-free and stress-free. No marriage is a rose without the thorns. No child is a perfect angel. And if the grass appears to be greener on your neighbor's side of the fence, remember that fences have nothing to do with it. The grass is greenest where it is watered. I'd like to leave you with a poem I found in an old poetry book, which helps explain why the battle to make the best of your life is even worth fighting. This poem is called Uphill. Does the road wind uphill all the way? Yes, to the very end. Will the day's journey take the whole long day? From morn to night, my friend. But is there for the night a resting place? A roof when the slow dark hours begin? Will not the darkness hide it from my face? You cannot miss that inn. Shall I meet other wayfarers at night? Well, those who have gone before. Then must I knock or call when just in sight? They will not keep you standing at that door. Then shall I find comfort when I'm travel sore and weak? Of labor you shall find the sum. Will there be beds for me and all who seek? Yea, beds for all who come. And so, fellow graduates of 1990, first say what it is you would be, then do what it is you have to do. As the poem implies, the result will be worth the climb. God bless you. Good luck and strong will to you all. Four years ago, you began your high school education. During that time, we have had the pleasure of seeing you develop into responsible young men and women. You have demonstrated perseverance. You have worked hard at being the best you can be. You have labored for knowledge. You have learned how to effectively interact with people. And you have contributed much to our various school programs. We thank you for setting high standards and for establishing a positive and spirited school environment. Your class provided the leadership that enabled Lucerna High School to receive recognition from the State Department of Education as a 1990 California Distinguished School. We thank you very much for that. Tonight, each of you is embarking on one of the most challenging phases of your lives. The challenges include the continued formation of your character and personality and of your purpose in life. My hope is that you will continue to exercise good judgment in making future career and personal decisions. Thank you for making a special contribution to Lucerna. You have been a cohesive and spirited class. You have enriched our lives and I hope we have played a significant role in your educational and social development. At this time, before I present the class to Mr. Rios, I am requesting the cooperation of the parents and relatives in the stands not to attempt to come down onto the field to take pictures and video movies. You are to remain in the stands to ensure an orderly presentation of diplomas. At the conclusion of the ceremony, you will be allowed to come onto the field. Now, I think this is what we're all waiting for. In my position as principal of Lucerna High School, I certify to you, Mr. Rios, this class has met school, district, and state requirements for graduation. Each member of this class should be granted a diploma with all rights and privileges. It is with pride that I present the distinguished class of 1990.